Previously on Engineering the Jigsaw, we've talked about the interactions between atomics at the virtual function bus level. And we've talked a lot about how we can describe the, the ways that software shares information and even how that information is able to be encoded at different levels of abstraction to get us to, to real source code in an ECU. We have also in the past talked about how ECUs, or at least the software running on the ECUs, shares information over networks to achieve a top level vehicle functionality. How do we get from the virtual function bus to that real communication though? Let's go find out. Hi everybody, I'm Ian Cunningham from VectorGB. Welcome to this intermediate level episode of Engine in the Jigsaw, how is information sent over networks? Intermediate episode number five. In this episode, we're going to look at how the Autozar methodology takes us from the conceptual virtual function bus to the real networks that link ECUs together up in vehicles. This is again part of our sequence of episodes where we're taking a much deeper look at the Autozar classic platform methodology and we're looking at software and communication design and today obviously a, a big focus into communication. We're picking up from where we finished in episode I4, how to describe data elements and arguments. If you haven't seen that, you may well want to go and watch it before we continue with this episode. So we have a completed virtual function bus description once we have described the information in terms of ADTs and IDTs and so on that is shared by our atomics and we've linked the ports on the atomics together with connectors. This means we've described the virtual function bus to a level where we can start to think about deployment of atomics to ECUs. So let's think about ECUs and networks. To get an Autozar system description, we need to describe how ECUs will be linked with networks and link each atomic that's set at the virtual function bus level with an ECU. Autozar provides the concept of a software component to ECU mapping to, to allow us to describe which atomic runs on a given ECU. The connectors between ports at atomics then tell us which information flows need to go between ECUs. And for each item of information that needs to flow between ECUs, we create a system signal. Great. But again, how do we then know which data elements, which system signals correspond? Well, a process called data mapping is performed to create data mapping objects that show exactly which system signal relates to an information, information flow at an atomic or the level of, of atomics in the virtual function bus. The basic software sends or receives each system signal as an interaction layer signal or I signal for short. I signals are designed to match the needs of specific network protocols such as CAN, LIN, FlexRay, Ethernet, whatever it is. Now I'll quickly talk about the Autosar communication model because normally we don't want to just send one signal at a time, one eye signal at a time. Normally we want to send multiple eye signals at one time from an ECU to make the most efficient use of the network protocol that we're using in the vehicle. And we have the concept then of an interaction layer protocol data unit or IPDU for short. And, and a PDU a protocol data unit is just a, a set of things we want to send together. It, it's uh, some relatively complicated words to say we want to pass this down to the, the next level beneath us in the communication stack, possibly the physical there. And the IPDU allows us to pack many I signals from a single ECU together for transmission by the basic software. And at a receiver, the basic software then extracts the needed I signals for that ECU, because we may not need all of them, of course. Now, as our I signals in the IPDU. Now, it might be that we design an IPDU that's too big for the payload of a single frame of a network protocol. And in this case, we're, we can make use of a transport protocol or TP in the basic software. And what this does is it chops IPDUs up into network PDUs or NPDUs for short that will fit into a frame 
when we have stuff that's too big to go in to start with. Now, the transport protocol actually also inserts information into the NPDUs to make sure that the, the, the transport protocol on the receiving end is able to put things back together in, in the right order. So the, the transport protocol is on the sender and the receiver side, so that's important to know. To get a bit more bus specific, then really from the point where we've defined IPDUs, the process of describing how information is shared becomes really specific to the mix of technologies that we have in use. So a, a short selection of things that we may need to consider. So some network technologies make use of schedules. Uh, so Lin and Flexray, for example. So we have to describe network schedules that describe how information will be sent in a in a cyclic way. We also, for some networks, need to dis uh, define aspects that will prevent two sets of information colliding on the network. So this is something that's needed in, in the CAN bus, for example. And we also may want to think about only sending information occasionally, so on an event-driven basis, or we might want to stream information and, and send it on a, on a set cycle. We also, with scheduled networks, might want to switch schedules on an event-driven basis. So we can, even with a scheduled network, we can sometimes change the schedules. This is something that's commonly done with LIN, for example. Depending on our network protocol, we may also want to package IPDUs into frames. And if we've got multiple networks, then we need to really think about how gateways are going to take information from one network and put it onto another. And this is done using routing entries. And routing entries are a, a, like a, a whole topic all to themselves because we can route at different levels. We can route a whole IPDU from one side to another, or we can actually unpack a PDU in a gateway, combine some of the I signals with or all the iSignals with iSignals from other PDUs and then send a new IPDU out on, on the other side. So we, we really can unpack a, a, an IPDU or set of IPDUs if we want to, to in the gateway if needed. And this all happens down in the basic software. The application will know none of this is, is actually happening, but it's part of those routing entries, really important part then of the basic software configuration. And where we have switched networks, such as automotive ethernet, we need to define switch configurations. So these are, I guess, conceptually sig uh, similar to, to gateway routing entries. It's saying for a given coupling port on a switch, how we want to tag and re-tag information and how we want to allow it to, to flow through the, the switch at layer two of the OC stack, if you know about layer two of the OC stack. As a summary, when we are developing an Autosar system description, after we describe the allocation of atomics to ECUs with a mapping, we create system signals for each item of information that needs to be transferred between ECUs. System signals are mapped to data elements and this allows us then to trace our information flow that goes between networks and, and bet between ECUs at the software level. I signals are defined for each network in the path of a signal, uh, a system signal, and are packed into IPDUs. And a transport protocol allows the transfer of IPDUs that are larger than the payload of an individual frame in a network protocol, if that's something that we encounter. There are then technology specific tasks that we need to perform to complete the definition of how network information is going to be transmitted and received at different ECUs. Wherever gateways or switches are used, then network switches that is, we, these also require definition tasks. And at that point, our network description would be completed. If you want to find out more on Autozar communication design, then please visit our website to find articles and webinars on the Autozar classic communication design process in our digital engineering platform, Prevision. You can also find free e-learning resources on all of the network technologies and the Autozar classic platform that we've mentioned in this episode. And of course, details of our technical training where you can learn much, much more about Autozar communication and software design. In our next episode, 
our final episode in this little series, we're going to take a deeper look again and we're going to find out how we get from the conceptual virtual function bus to a real ECU. Please let us know if you'd like to know how to approach communication design in the Autozar Adaptive platform. If you want to let us know that, or if you've got another idea for a topic or questions on this or any other episode, then please email us. Use our special email address, engineering.jigsaw at vector.com. Of course, feel free to leave a, a comment wherever you found this video. And again, my thanks to Alex Ginnett and Mahmoud Ibrahim for their help in preparing the information and reviewing content on this episode. Don't forget, hit that bell to get notified when our next episode comes out or, or other videos from Vector on our YouTube channel. My name's Ian Cunningham for Vector GB. We'll see you again soon. Bye.